Okay, it's going. Uh, hey guys, I just wanted to talk about some stuff uh, that happened this season for the Wild. Uh, it was a pretty good year with significant portions of it. Sucking ass. Um, best thing that happened was obviously the acquisition of Dem Dubnik in late January, early February, I think it was. Um, right before the Buffalo game where they scored seven and he got a shutout. Um, yeah, it was pretty, pretty cool. Um, worst thing to happen, uh, a sweep by the Blackhawks in the playoffs. Obviously one of the worst things that has ever happened in wild playoff history. Um, maybe. I'm going to say it is. Uh, you guys might disagree. I totally didn't see it coming. I Definitely don't think I saw us winning for sure, but I saw it being competitive, which it really was not, except for the first game and the last game, and it was only about half the first game, uh, less than that maybe, uh, and it was the last half. Uh, but yeah, they beat us again, and now they're in the Stanley Cup Finals yet again. Oh boy. Three times in five years. That is, uh, that's impressive. Uh, um, I don't know what else to say. I guess I'll do some players that I think had great seasons. Uh, Parisi, obviously, is the number one offensive uh, heartbeat of this team. And he will be for years to come, hopefully. Yeah, as long as he doesn't get injured. He missed a couple games with a concussion this year, which kind of worries me. Concussions always are kind of finicky things, and it could come back at any point in time to bite him in the ass. Uh, but yeah, that could be an issue going forward. Um, Jason Zucker, I thought he was insanely good this year. Uh, again... Injuries, uh, broken clavicle, same issue as Patrick Kane had. They both came back slightly early. Uh, Zucker was probably only a week or two early. Kane came back about five weeks early, which I believe uh, was kind of a sham. I do believe that a Blackhawks team doctor uh, fudged the report a little bit. Uh, but I won't. I have no proof. So, whatever. Um, but, yeah, Nino, Nino was good. He wasn't as great as I thought he would be. I thought this was going to be a breakout year for him. Uh, Scandella, this was a breakout year for him. This guy came in. I, I'm pretty sure he led all defensemen in goals. I don't have the stats on me right now, but he led. let's go with he led all defensemen in goals. Because I'm pretty sure that's true. Um, his defense was insane. He's one of the few guys on this team that constantly hits along the boards. Which is something that this team has never done well. And probably will continue to not do well next season. Um, yeah, I thought he was good. Uh, Matt Dumba, I thought, had a great year. Uh, of course, a shortened year because he got sent back down to Iowa. Um... And those were the guys. Uh, everyone else either had a disappointing year, which I'll talk about in a minute, or a middling year. Like, uh, Coyle, it's whatever. Uh, he's never going to be a huge goal scorer. I've come to accept that. He's a good defender, which I love. I think that third line needs a good, big bodied defender there. And he's that guy. Uh, Pominville didn't score as many goals this year. He had a bunch of weird bounces that should have that he fanned on all the time. Spurgeon held steady as always. Uh, not really too impressed uh, with him, and he may be on the trading block, which I'll talk about in another video. Uh, Suter, couple boneheaded mistakes that cost us. 
Brodziak, I thought, played amazing this year, and I'm kind of sad to see him go. He was a great part of the part of this team. He'll probably go back to Edmonton, I would assume. Um, though maybe not. He's definitely not coming back here. Uh, who else? Justin Fontaine. He was all right at times. Uh, Ryan Carter. He was all right. Jordan Leopold was better than I thought he would be. He still wasn't anything special. Didn't score. I mean, I think he had one point, maybe two, the entire year. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, everyone else kind of middle of the road again, which is disappointing. Um. Oh, and Dubnik played great, obviously. Uh, Vesna candidate. What can I say about him? I'm going to talk more about Dubnik when they... When? If they happen to re-sign him. Uh, but... Uh, now disappointments. Who is the most disappointing this year? <laughs> and this is going to... People are going to disagree with this because the obvious answer is going to be Thomas Vanek. But I'm not going to say Thomas Vanek is most disappointing. Um... I'm going to say Mikhail Granlin. Uh, that kid was huge in the playoffs last year. He had, I think, four points against Chicago. Guess how many he had this year? I think he had two. Maybe three. Which sounds like it would be about the same. Maybe he had six or seven. I can't remember right offhand. He didn't play up to his potential. And he hasn't played up to his potential since he's been here. And it's starting to grate on me. Because this guy was a first round pick. And it's his third year. And he still is having trouble. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, with him. Another guy. Eric Howla. Obviously. He's a fourth liner. Like. He's fast. When he wants to be. And when he's in shape. Which apparently were issues this year. Um. But he's not an offensive weapon. He had a great couple series. Played great against Colorado. He played great against Chicago last year in the playoffs. He was scratched this entire playoffs almost. I think he scored like seven goals this year. I could be wrong. Again, I don't have any stats in front of me. But yeah, it's just not working with him. And I don't know what the problem is. And I want him on the team because he's a former gopher. And I hate that about myself. I hate that. But yeah. Uh, Eric Howla. Definitely disappointing. Uh, another guy. Chris Stewart I guess. If you want to call him disappointing. It wasn't a big surprise to anyone. That he faded in the playoffs. And faded towards the end of the year. Because that's his MO. Sean Bergenheim. Whatever. Whatever. That guy is never going to play another game in the NHL. So, especially after how he played in the playoffs this year, I thought I actually thought he had a couple good games, but nothing near what they give up for him, which I think was a second round pick, third rounder, third round pick. I maybe it was a fifth rounder. I don't know. Again, nothing in front of me. Uh, but yeah, wasn't worth the trade. Uh, Nate Prosser wasn't disappointing. Uh, but it, he was average. He was Prosser. Played better than he did in previous years, but he didn't play great. Uh, yeah. Darcy Kemper, totally disappointing. <laughs> Required us to go out and trade for Dubnik, which was a good trade in hindsight. Uh, but yeah. Jeez. Uh, Backstrom, not disappointing to me because that's what I figured... He was going to do. I mean, 34-year-old goalies in this league, they don't make a ton of saves. They're, not everyone is Marty Brodeur, okay? So that's about what I thought would happen with Backstrom. Uh, it was kind of disappointing that Harden's career ended the way it did. Breaking his foot and then his MS flares up so bad he's never going to play again in the NHL or... I won't say ever again, the sport ever again. He'll probably be able to play like some beer league or something. Uh, but yeah, that was kind of sad. Another like, sadness, another sad thing. Uh, 
both losing both JP Parisi and uh, Bob Suter. Two truly great uh, upper Midwest hockey uh, icons, really. I mean, Bob Suter has been has been a huge part of the Madison hockey scene for basically his entire life. And he played it in the Miracle on Ice. I don't know if he actually played in that game, though. I've seen footage, and I've never seen him. So, he was like a backup, I guess. Uh, but yeah, and J.P. Parisi, uh, of course, coach at uh, Shattuck St. Mary's. Uh, yeah, I mean, father of Zach Parisi. North Stars, Islanders, legend. Uh, maybe not such a legend with the Islanders. Definitely with the North Stars. Um, yeah, and both those guys just gone. And, uh, I mean, the ending of Keith Ballard's career. I mean, it was so sad how it happened. Uh, it was just... It goes to show you that even on the cleanest of plays, a guy... A guy's career can end. In, like, a second. Even if it's a clean hit. Um, of course, Ballard turned in uh, out of it, tried to turn out of it, and caught a, caught a jaw full of Dasher, which uh, didn't help his concussion situation, which wasn't great to begin with, mind you. But yeah, he, he's probably done for, his, his career's probably over, uh, which is sad. A uh, great Minnesota hockey guy. Uh, hopefully they bring him back in some capacity with the club. I would love to see that. Uh, the same with Harden. Though I don't know what he could do because I don't see Bob Mason leaving anytime soon. Though possibly. Um, so hopes for next year. One, uh, get more scoring, which I think we've said about, oh, what year of the Wild established? 2000? Besides Gabrick, there has never been a pure goal scorer on this squad. Even Vanek, when he wants to, he's a pure goal scorer, but he w wasn't this year, and that so infuriates me. But not as much as Scrambling. Uh, I still think Vanek had a, a bad year. I think it'll be better next year. Uh, though I don't know, because stats have never shown anything like this. Vanek has never had such a terrible year. Uh, but yeah, you still have 20 plus goals, which isn't bad. But we need guys who can sc We need guys who could score more than that, uh, possibly. So, uh, what to do next year? I'm gonna make a separate video about this, but to be honest, Spurgeon has to go. I mean, it's just inconceivable that this guy is on the team next year to me. Uh, he's getting paid way too much to do way too little. Uh, he's not going to be, he's never going to be a first line pairing unless Brodeen, oh by the way, I didn't mention Brodeen because I forgot about him and that's the best thing you can say about Brodeen is that you forget he's even there because he's playing so good. Uh, he played, had a great year again, uh, didn't have a lot of points, but played great defensively, which is what you want. Um... But yeah, I don't see Spurgeon on this team. He can't break that Sudi Brodeen tandem. Now that Brodeen's established himself as kind of an uh, elite uh, young defenseman. And, you know, I think Dumba plays better than him. Dumba has a big upside. He has to, Dumba has to work on his defense and his decision-making skills. But that'll come with time. I mean, he's only a rookie. Next year, we could see this kid... Uh, I wouldn't. I don't think it's inconceivable to say Matt Dumba has 15 plus goals next year. But yeah, Spurgeon needs to get traded. Probably, I would say Edmonton is a possible candidate, and I'd love to see Yakupov. Uh, don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, Yakupov may be a little steep for just Spurgeon, but they are trying to rebuild defensively. They're getting Connor McDavid. Uh, they might. Have to free up a center spot. So that's what I'm thinking. Uh, other than that, sign Doomnik. Um, figure out some way to get Granny back on this team. I don't know what he wants. If he wants money. If he wants term. I would say... 
make it happen. Hopefully, because uh, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna give up? Give up on the guy? His third season out? No, of course you're not. So resign him. I mean, we got got to resign Howla. I mean, Howla is another one that I'm not sure that we should resign. I'm wary of it. I'm so not ready to say Eric Howla is the position is in a position that he's immune to letting walk. Uh, I think buyout Backstrom. I thought that should have been the answer last season. But of course, uh, Harding kind of put him over a barrel there when he broke his foot. Um, other than that, I don't know what else we can do. Our cap is really limited because of the Suter and Parisi contracts, which I don't, I'm not complaining because I think those are great contracts and I think we needed them to take us to this level that we're at, which is, uh, Definitely, right now, a team to watch in the Central Division. But I also don't know... Sorry, I've... Someone's mowing. Uh, but I also don't know... I also don't know who else we could get rid of. I think Cook might... I want Cook to retire this year. I really do, not just because of his persona that he projects that he is this pest and that no one likes him and that he ended careers and he's ended several careers, but he's old and he can't skate and he doesn't hit as much anymore and everything he does is, you know, not that great. I think Ryan Carter is back next year. I think he's back for... Brizgal or Brizgalov, don't bring back Brizgalov, please. <laughs> um, as much as I love Briz, that is not the answer and goal. Let me tell you. Uh, but I was Brodziak is who I was trying to say. He's younger, I think, faster, uh, and has better hands than Brodziak. Brodziak still has the hands of stone. I think he had like eight goals this year, maybe ten. Uh, a couple of them were pretty nice. That one against the Bruins where he took it from the wall and dangled. I thought that was pretty sweet, but uh, you're not going to get that every night from him. So, uh, yeah, he's gone. Uh, but, yeah, other than that, I think we got guys locked down. I like the Nino re-signing this year. I like the Coyle re-signing. Uh, obviously, Scandella Brodeen, love that. I think Zucker re-signed... I think this summer, yeah, I like that. So I think gap deal for Granlin, figure out something with Howla, re-sign Dubnik, and trades Burgeon. Those are the only things that I can see happening. Um, oh, and by the way, if Spurgeon's gone, uh, Folin is coming up. We are not uh, putting Prosser and Leopold on the same line, which I don't even know if we can get Leopold. It depends on the salary cap. If we can, I would love to see him back. He played better than his age and he's serviceable uh but if not Fullen sh should be up in the NHL right now he was an older rookie so I mean he should be playing here but yeah all in all great season ups and downs roller coaster I mean that's when the sold sports for you uh but yeah also uh, let's do it again next year is that Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you like this, subscribe. If not, don't. Uh, click the like button if you like it. Uh, hopefully, I'll be doing another one of these tomorrow or some other day. Uh, depends when I have the time. Uh, so thanks, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, talk to you later. Bye.